Good morning and welcome to Crossroads Union Church. Glad to have you folks here, either in person or online. And if you are here in person, don't worry, you will not blow away. We might outside, but in your cars, you should be safe and sound. And you can tune in to 88.5. Or if you're like me and want to have a three second delay, you can scream as well on your phone. Just kidding, but glad to have you folks here. <laughs> Another announcement for this morning. We've changed things up a little bit uh, to, the law, to avoid the delay between the kids' message and the rest of the service. So we're going to put the kids' message right after the opening hymn. So that way, during the opening hymn, our younger brothers and sisters can come forward uh, through the parking lot, find the little chairs, and <coughs> sit down. So again, um, during the first song, uh, please, young ones, don't be shy, come forward during the song, and Amanda will be doing the children's message today. Again, that's right after the first song. Also, the first reading is a psalm. We are not doing that responsibly. Will is just going to read the psalm for us. Um, it looks like you're supposed to read it responsibly. You're not. If you can, we're not going to hit you. Don't worry about that. But the idea is for Will presented for us as well. So again, two things. Kids' message right after the first song. So kids come up during the first song. And then um, the song will not be read responsibly. <coughs> we'll begin with our confession and forgiveness, which is found printed in the bulletin, which um, hopefully you have. <laughs> Listen. Uh oh. Hey, I'm going to face this way. <laughs> Pretend I'm looking at you, okay? Blessed the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us all in creation. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive of sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go on our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to live in your through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. Live in freedom and newness to God's work in the world. Amen. We'll continue now with our opening song. And at that time again, please, young ones, come forward and find an orange chair.
Grab that mic. Yeah, grab that mic. Good morning, friends. How are you today? Good. Is it kind of windy up today? Yeah. A little bit, huh? Huh? I know they're a little tiny, but you know what? I felt kind of funny last time having all these stand up and I was standing up talking to them. I thought sitting down might be a little bit better. And that gives you a break. Right, gives you something to sit on.
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and honor, and turn in the Lord and pray, my beloved. I urge I urge you, I urge Simpson, be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clements and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Oh, this went off. I think you were on. There you go. The Holy Gospel, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who is in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, when they think they'll be heard because of the many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you give the sins of others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The Gospel. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to the Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. The house that I grew up in had a dining room, but it was hardly ever, ever used. I think a few times in the 1970s when Fondue was full, we'd have a couple of Sunday evening suppers there because the dining room table was actually a round table. It was probably easier for us to reach into the Fondue pots to put our bread into the thick cheese that clogs the arteries and the marshmallows into the chocolate sauce that rotted the teeth. But the reality is, every other meal that I remember was eaten at the large kitchen table in the equally large kitchen of the house. It didn't matter which occasion, Thanksgiving, kitchen table, Christmas, kitchen table, Easter, kitchen table. When we had company, my parents had a lot of company, it was always at the kitchen table. Somehow, we were a lot more comfortable at the kitchen table than where we were in the formal dining room. And to this day, when I think about comfort food, I think more about the meals at the table than individual items, although if you want to make me happy, 
a pot of navy bean soup and homemade white bread are the way to go. And that was often a Saturday evening supper at our house. It's kind of funny what things store in our minds that bring us comfort and what kind of memories and comfort come from the various senses. For example, for some strange reason, the scent or aroma of a tangerine brings me to Christmas. Not balsam, not pine, not peppermint, but a tangerine. I don't get it, but it does. Vinegar brings a lot of happy memories too. I know that seems strange, but there's all kinds of good things about vinegar. All those things. And then pipe tobacco brings me to my dad. All of those things are comforting. And I bet you today, when we'll proclaim the words from our first psalm, the first reading, you're comforting. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. And from the King James Version, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Ever notice on television or in a movie when there is a funeral? Well, here's Psalm 23. Most likely you'll also hear the words, Amazing Grace sung. It's not only true in the media, when there's a tragedy of some kind on the news too, you'll inevitably hear those words, Psalm 23 and Amazing Grace. And it used to bother me that they were used so often, but I've changed my mind because the reality is that they are words of comfort. When we're walking through the deep valley of darkness and the shadow of death, Oh boy, you need to comfort the whole army, don't we? But it's more than comfort. It's a prayer. Psalm 23 is not only a song, it is a prayer. Notice the change. We begin by describing what God does, and then we address God and we say, Thou, in the old English, you, or we want to be now. And it turns in a conversation. It turns in to a prayer. As a man is sending the kids message, prayer is really just conversation with God. He prays. is communication. And communication goes both ways. Both sides talk and listen to each other. A sign the relationship has ended or is in trouble is when communication stops. A lot of times we have to remember that we are in a similar relationship with God. That God expects us to speak to God and God also expects us to hear God speak back. That is prayer. There is an old book by Judy Bloom called, Are you, Are you There, God? It's Me, Margaret. I confess I should have read the book, I never did, but the title bothers me. Because it's questioning whether God is there. Now, I'll be the first to admit that sometimes God seems a million miles away, and I'll admit, too, that sometimes my prayers seem like they go unheard or are unanswered. But it's not because they're not heard, and it's not because they're unanswered. 
Shakespeare's old adage is true for prayer to thine own self be true. But the reality is that it should be difficult for us to pray. And maybe we do have to begin with, hey God, it's me. Hey God, it's me, John. I'm not going to tell you folks how to pray. I can tell you that my prayer has always just been very, very conversational. I can yell at God. I can cry to God. I can have, I like to think humor with God, but I do have conversation. And all too often I'll admit that I don't listen for the answer to come back, but I do know it always does come back. I also know that our prayer life can always improve no matter how good it is. Because the thing is, the more that we speak to God, and the more that we take an opportunity to listen back to God, the more than ever we realize that we dwell with God. And that dwelling, there's incredible, incredible comfort that us through absolutely everything. So please, I beg of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to increase your prayer life. It really, really will bring immeasurable comfort and joy. And also, God's going to be pleased. I've said over and over and over again that God loves us more than we can ever realize. And that means that God does like to hear from us. So speak. Whatever your style is, speak to God. Wait for the answers and see where we'll go. With that, to God the glory, down forever. Amen. We'll continue now with our next song.
Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his God, the only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you account of the judge for living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> So with you. We'll continue now with our offering. And if you are at home, please use the Give Plus app uh, for the offering. If you are here, there is a box on the table. Um, come forward during the music and place your offering into that box. And this time, too, if you want to get the communion kits ready, um, they work this way. There's a thin softening uh, layer on the Regular kits that you can remove first, take it to the host and wait for it. And after that, there's a coil. If you have the blue spray kit, um, the host is on one end and the juice is on the other end. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for a heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our saving Lord. Amen. In the name which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and the hungry, saying, This cup to be published in my blood for you for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we praise he taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table, for Christ is himself is food and drink. If you are at home and you're distributing the bread, please give the bread out with the words, this is the body of Christ broken for you. For the congregation here, this is the body of Christ broken for you. You may go ahead and eat. And at home, if you have a wine or juice, please give it with this, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For the congregation here, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Then go ahead and drink. <coughs> the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and strengthen you in His grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We be thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with your food beyond compare. The body and blood of Christ, lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guide by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And parental God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way, truth, and life. Amen. Before our sending song, um, a few announcements. First of all, church council will be meeting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. And if you want anything brought to the council's attention, you can either contact me or Darren Sweeter, our president, and we'll make sure that that's put on the agenda for tomorrow evening. Also, I know I sound like a broken record in regards to our congregational app. I believe, emphasis on believe, what will happen this week. I think all the issues have been resolved as of Friday. But again, emphasis on belief, not will for sure, but I think this week we'll have the app. Um, this past Monday, the staff had a meeting, and they decided um, that outdoor worship on Sunday mornings will continue until December. We might not have gloves and hats. Parkers. We weren't thinking about the wind right now. I think let's get inside. But anyway, um, we'll try outdoor until December. Wednesday evening will be outside until November. It is got too, gets too dark, and so we'll try that as well. So again, you know, dress warm, um, bring love, bring hats until December if you're part of the Sunday morning group. Okay, we are aware that COVID-19 cases are increasing locally, and so when you're inside the building, please, please, please wear a mask. And then look for the disinfectant wipes that are around as well and do your part to disinfect surfaces that uh, you may have used or touched. We'd appreciate that very, very much. The September offerings were down, unfortunately, so we do need your help making up for that shortfall. So if you can possibly do that, we'd very, very much appreciate that. And give our council peace of mind and heart, as well as our lenders. And so please, if you can do that, we appreciate that very, very much as well. If you notice today, we had the kids' message on prayer and the sermon on prayer. 
next week we'll have more emphasis on prayer because we are leading to um, a prayer vigil at the end of the month. It's going to begin at 9 a.m. on October 24th, which is a Saturday, and end at 9 a.m. our worship time on October 25th, which is also the Revolution <coughs> Day. We need volunteers to pray for those 24 hours. The church will be open if you want to use the church. If you don't want to use the church, you can certainly use your Lazy Boy recliner at home. That's no problem as well. We'll be sending out a Google sheet for people to sign up for which hour they would like to cover in prayer. We'll also be sending out a prayer wheel, which will help you really fill that hour very easily. You might be thinking, oh, I can't pray for an hour. Actually, it's far easier than what we realize. Um, and again, as I said in the sermon, we'll give you the prayer wheel, but just use your own language for prayer, your own comfort level, but we'll give you all kinds of points to pray for. Our congregation, our country, our world, all kinds of things. It'll be good for the congregation, good for Roberts, good for you, good for the community. And so please keep your ears peeled out for, and eyes peeled out for more details. But again, two weeks from now will be the conclusion of our prayer vigil as well. Sunday school is going to be inside today. Of course, now the wind has stopped. Funny how that works. <laughs> But due to the wind and cold, Sunday school is going to go inside. Now, if you're going to shelter inside during Sunday school, we ask that you actually please use Sunday school room two and visit in there. Um, if you can, please open the window to keep the air flowing. But we prefer that those who are inside seeking shelter while the kids are at Sunday school use um, Sunday school room two. That's it for me. Does anyone else have anything else to say? All right, then, we'll continue with our setting song. See? 
singing in the light of God. We are singing in the light of God. We are singing, we are singing, we are singing in the light of God. We are singing, we are singing, we are singing in the light of God. Just two more things. Sunday school begins at 10 o'clock. And as always, if you want to help us bring stuff inside, that'd be more than appreciated. Go in peace, remember the Lord. Thanks be to God. Woo. Thank you.